focusing on uh, how what was so coming to your college selection journey uh, which how was your selection college selection process uh, what did you consider and how did you end up choosing uc berkeley so sure. uh, so in terms of applications i sent in applications to uh, six or seven universities i'll try to name them all uh, so i applied to mit obviously stanford caltech uh, berkeley uh ucla as well and uh, let's see uh michigan i think uh, so michigan and arbor for their mechanical engineering program uh apart from that i applied to europe to uh two universities uh tu delft and kth sweden so these were the eight universities kind of that i applied to uh i ended up getting admits from berkeley uh ucla and and so two admits from the us only so ucla and uc berkeley um in in the in europe i got admits from both of them so tu delft and uh, kth sweden both of them gave me admits for uh, fall of 2021 so these are my four admits uh, i was uh, you know europe was something that i applied to only because i wasn't sure so although i applied to like the top universities and i was like oh i definitely want to do it at a top university you can understand how intimidated one can get if you only apply to top universities and you you feel like oh what if i don't get admits from any of them i don't really have a game plan if i don't get it so uh for engineering my thought process was i want to go to a better engineering school rather than at a school in general i've heard a lot of mixed reviews about ucla berkeley i saw the university as well when i was there and it's definitely a really beautiful um, you know campus uh, at ucla um I, and and berkeley is also really pretty and and i love it uh, completely but i i can see why people would like to choose ucla uh it is a uh, a bigger uh, uh, and and campus and it is located in la which is like really great um but my thought process was i should go to a better school for what i want to do uh, berkeley had um engineering in terms of energy engineering as well so there are programs in energy engineering itself uh which wasn't directly related to me i wouldn't be doing that program but i still knew that there were people uh like students as well as professors who were working on things that i want to work on uh there's also the lawrence berkeley national lab just right next to berkeley uh like the campus of berkeley and and so they heavily focus on energy research um in in every aspect even going up to nuclear energy and stuff like that so uh i think that was the main uh, deciding factor for me i looked at resources looked at uh people there uh, talked to a lot of the people who graduated from the same program as me um as compared to europe that felt like uh, a much better uh you know uh resource in general for me to study what i want to study uh the main thing was my masters program at berkeley was one year and uh, at uh, tu delft was two years and so i was concerned about how i would be able to you know enter the job market and and look for jobs while studying for just a year uh hope eventually it did work out and, and everyone said that eventually it will work out but you don't feel the satisfaction until it works out right you're very tense and you're very scared of what is going to happen and especially because you're on a visa and on uh, with a loan and all of that so very scary definitely but uh, yes it does work out so all good got it got it uh, so as you mentioned the uh, visa policy is something very concerning for the students there so my next question to you would be like what is the education and the work visa policy in the us for international students so sure. um depending on uh, what kind of uh, masters you have uh so there's two ty- two types one is the stem and one is a non stem uh stem is science technology engineering and math i think and so if your program has any of these aspects then you and and this will be clearly mentioned but the your program will be a stem program uh, or not and and if your program is a non stem program you generally have one year after you finish your masters to work uh within which you have to uh get into the h1b lottery uh in case of a uh, stem program you have 3 years so you have 1 year and then you have two additional years due to your stem extension <clears throat> right and so uh this obviously is uh, contingent on the fact that you have a job in the us right who is also ready to sponsor your visa in the future 
Uh, and so uh, maybe just a rough idea is you should usually uh, ask the company when you're applying or when you're talking to them, whether they sponsor a visa or not, if your plan is to stay in the US. If you just want to stay there for three years, and I'm talking about engineering and STEM programs. So if you just want to stay for three years, then it doesn't matter to anyone whether they'll be able to sponsor a work visa or not, right? But what happens is they still want people to stay with them. They don't want people just taking the basic training from them and then, you know, learning a lot of things and then just going away after three years. So it works both ways and you really have to look for a lot of opportunities. Uh, in terms of the visa, how it works is uh, once you get a job within after you graduate, you have to get a job within, um, as I said, three to four months of graduation, right? Uh, you have to have a job within that. Uh, all of me and all of my friends luckily had jobs even before we graduated. So that was uh, fortunate and that is usually how it will work. But even if you don't, you have three or four months of time after you graduate to look for a job. Uh, once you get a job, you'll start working there. You'll work for a year. You'll apply for the STEM extension uh, at your under, at your grad university, right? So they'll be the ones that will provide you with the STEM extension. You'll have additional two years to work there. Every year, you'll have an opportunity to apply for the H-1B lottery. And so if your name comes into the lottery system, you'll be able to, or your company will be able to apply for your H-1B uh, visa, right? So I think the lottery is the main bottleneck, at least for Indian students, uh, because India has a huge backlog in the H-1B application lotteries. Um, and so you have three attempts at the lottery. Uh, usually what will happen is even if you don't get through the lottery, the, if your company is like a multinational company, they'll send you to another country or something like that. But so that, which is why you, it is very important for you to choose a company according to what your needs are, right? If you plan on staying here, maybe don't go for a startup uh, who is not able to, you know, uh, uh, take care of you if you don't get through the lottery system or something like that, right? So yeah, that was the lottery system, uh, the visa policy. But yeah, makes sense. So most of the students they try to look for some scholarships while applying to the colleges or different programs. So are you aware of any scholarships that are present or available for international students? Right. So uh, this differs. <clears throat> you have on campus or, or uh, you know, university-specific uh, scholarships that the university itself provides. Then there's also scholarships specific to the program or the department that you're applying to, right? Uh, and so this is mostly about Berkeley. Uh, in general, every university will have certain scholarships, uh, but they'll cater to a specific section of society or a specific, you know, uh, catering to a specific race or a specific country of origin or something like that. Uh, you also have... Uh, scholarships outside of universities. So these are external scholarships that you can get uh, not only in India, but also like globally, there are scholarships. One of the ones that I found, if someone is interested in, you know, pursuing a degree related to energy, uh, there was one called the Global Sustainable Energy Program or GSEP, something like that. They're based out of Canada, uh, but they do provide uh, good scholarships to people who are working in the energy field and want to come back to their home university, uh, home country and, and work for that country. Um, so yeah, tons of scholarships available. You really have to look hard for a lot of them, but uh, they're, they are still available. I personally found scholarships at Berkeley once I was there as well. So that is something that you can do. So once you're there, you find a lot of avenues and a lot of places where you can apply to scholarships. Uh, so it's not like once you get into the university and you go there, that's done, you're paying the whole amount. You know, once you get there, you get to understand a lot of things where you can save money, make money. And so, yeah. Uh, so coming to the end of our discussion, current. so since you would be just starting out your job, so like a general question, like how should people there, or how should someone look for the job and what is the application process there? Like through online reference. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that? Uh, so the job search is uh, very, uh, you know, uh, personal. You don't, uh, so you have a lot of resources provided by the university, but you mostly have to do it yourself. Uh, the resources that will be provided by the university are uh, including, but not limited to obviously, uh, resume reviews, um, you know, cover letter reviews. They'll help you with the interview process and, and say, 
oh, this is, uh, so say uh, I'm talking about once you have an offer, they also help you with negotiations and a lot of different things, right? So they have this whole career department uh, that helps you with that uh, process overall. Uh, uh, but the application process is mostly by yourself, right? So you, what you want to do is firstly uh, figure out what companies or what kind of role at least you want to go for. I personally did not have that when I started out, which I think was a limiting factor in uh, why I wasn't getting interview calls. Uh, once I started doing that, uh, I started understanding exactly what I want to do. Still broad, but at least a bit narrower than what I was doing before. Right. So I, I started doing that and, and applying to companies that were you know aligning with me, actually. And, and so that you don't have to lie when you're talking in an interview. Right. You, you can say, oh, I really like this aspect of your company and all of that. It is really hard to get an interview call back, um, especially as an international student. Uh, but there are companies that uh, sponsor international students and have a lot of international students, but still will not reply, uh, you know, at all. Um, and, and that's maybe not a reflection of you, right? You don't have to get, get uh, bothered by why I'm not getting an interview call. Maybe just look for another company and apply to that. So don't be restrictive in that sense. Um, let's see. Other than that, you definitely should talk to people who are at the company. So if you're, uh, especially at Berkeley, uh, what would happen was any company that I found on LinkedIn would have at least, you know, at least one or two alumni from the university that are working there. Uh, and so the alumni network is really helpful. And that maybe that's also something that you could consider when you are applying to universities. And so um, you could directly just, you know, talk to them, uh, message them, maybe don't reply. Maybe, I mean, the, the good thing is you just have to, maybe if you send out 500, you know, messages, which doesn't take too much time, you, even if you get back like five, you still have, you know, five referrals that you can apply to, you know, uh, companies and referrals are really helpful. Um, I wouldn't say they directly get you an interview call because I've had uh, referrals at big companies, but still haven't gotten through their um, uh, interview round or even their first round. But it definitely helps to have someone on the inside who can guide you through the application process. So definitely do that. Even if you don't have alumni in the company, reach out to anyone at the company, reach out to the recruiter, they're usually someone who will be ready to talk and just say, oh, I'm interested in this position. Uh, can you set up a time to, you know, chat for five minutes or 10 minutes and then just uh, talk to them uh, and, and try to convince them to, you know, at least take you to the next round. So I think uh, university uh, connections and uh, the resources your university provides, like career fairs, right? Career fairs is also a resource that your university provides. And there'll be... Uh, companies coming to you, you can uh, print out resumes and, you know, hand it directly to them and they'll have this repository of, you know, who to connect with or who to contact. And I think that was the best way for me to get interviews. There was this career fair on, on this platform called Handshake. I think a lot of universities use it, but what would happen was this, this was online for the first semester at least. Uh, and, and they would have 10 minute slots for you talking to every specific company that you want to. And so you could book these 10 minute slots. And I, uh, the first time I did it, I literally booked 10 minute slots uh, with everyone. And so I, uh, I had no time in between them as well. So I was just doing it for four hours straight. Uh, what would happen through that is if they like you even a little bit, they'll set you up for a second round or an interview call or something like that at least. So definitely very helpful uh, career fairs in that sense. Perfect. Uh, so with this, we have come to the end of our discussion, Karan. Uh, so thank you for being a part of our discussion and sharing your insights with our viewers. We are sure many candidates will be inspired after learning about it. Definitely. No, thank you so much for having me. And I would love to uh, you know, connect with anyone who uh, wants to talk or, or just understand the process in a bit more detail. I know this is not very uh, elaborate, but uh, try to put in any, uh, as much input as I could. It was really helpful. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks, Karan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, folks. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, guys, please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below. And see you soon with our next video.